in india if you ask people that what is the northern most part of the india then many people would say either it is delhi or it is punjab but few people would say it is jammu kashmir is the most northern part in india what is beyond jammu kashmir then it is himalaya what is beyond himalaya then it is russia <laughs> means there is nothing so beyond himalaya there is nothing so people believe that that is the end of the earth means that is the end of there is very high altitude himalaya certainly there is high altitude himalaya karakoram range and second highest mountain peak in himalaya that is k2 around 8600 plus 8611 or something meter so k2 is in karakoram range only but beyond that people in india they don't so beyond that there is a very famous region called kashi then in recent time it become in buddhist time it become uighur and now it is zinjiang province of china so very famous region religious religious river famous river kashi river that flows in that river another famous river sita river sita river that is the main river of that region also called tarim river or tarim basin also flows in that river karakush yarankush so these two river when they meet they becomes hotan river hotan means gosta so hotan river also flow in that region so there are very famous places in that region like hotan kashi urumqi and many other places those are very famous in that region so the northern to the himalaya what we know is not the end of the himalaya so from karakoram range that is considered a junction point of the three himalaya from karakoram range one himalaya goes to west and it goes to nanga parvat hindu kush and then caucasian mountain mountain in iraq uh, iraq and then it goes till turkey so that is kind of iraq azerbaijan area and if we see the east of the uh, karakoram range that is called greater himalaya so from there like uh, nanda devi and then uh, we have uh, uh, mount everest and sagarmatha sagarmatha sagar means everywhere matha means head everywhere everyone's head sagarmatha all around if you go in the globe then this is the head means highest altitude or also called mount everest then if you go then it will come as kanchenjan so and i think west to mount everest is makalu and those are the peaks are there so karakoram range is considered a junction point from there one himalaya goes to north slightly it will go to north so west side it will make pamir plateau and there you will find tian shan peak of the himalaya that is also around 7000 meter high from there it will take eastward and it will go till mongolia so indian subcontinent is himalayan region but it is not mountainous so only himalaya is mountain but indian subcontinent is mostly it is plain so if you come from greater himalaya to south it is it is kind of the world glory gangetic plain it is completely plain completely plain in the sense water will not go any side so it is that much plain and if you take the northern himalaya then west side that comes as central asia if you take the east side then it is karakoram it is takla makan desert so that is also a plain okay if you see the west side of himalaya then indus plain comes into the picture so it is a plain india is a country of plain maximum it is like iranian and those places it is plateau iranian plateau in that only afghanistan and 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 uh, 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 the kind of uh, the part uh, that is in baluchistan so baluchistan afghanistan iran so all falls in iranian 
plateau area. But if you see the northern Himalaya, or it is also called extended Himalaya, where Tian Shan comes, the east side is Takla Makan Desert. So in that desert, there are many oases highly cultivating it. So in that, there is one region called Kashi. Then we have Hotan region, Urumqi. So these are highly cultivating area and main river that starts from the Karakoram road range is Tarim river or Sita river. So Sita river flows and then all the river, they kind of, they meet the Sita. So like Hotan river, Kashi river and near Urumqi also, I believe Urumqi is a river or there is some river. Then finally, the Sita river or Urum or Tarim river, it meets Lopnur. Lopnur is a big lake, used to be a big lake. Now there is no lake like, so there is nothing. And uh, Tarim river, Sita river never goes to, to the Lopnur lake at all. In between only it vanishes. Because so much dam is, it is a highly dammed river. But whatever, but this is the scenario. So we are talking about Uyghur province. Uyghur province, Xinjiang province in China, insurgency, insurgency in Uyghur. So 15th August 1947, I call if it is Independence Day for India, then it is the most dependent or most blackened day for the Indian subcontinent. It is something like if you have a switch and with the switch, all the bulbs are connected and if you cut down the switch at all, then no one will grow. It is because you have to switch on, then only bulb, bulb would grow. So greater Himalaya region, that is the India now, so that is key to all part in Indian subcontinent. In 1947, the great party called Indian National Congress, when it came to power, then it started making boundary, closing people inside a small boundary and looting. So this is what was their profession. Now, when this scenario started, then the other part of Indian subcontinent, they become like a lifeless, means kind of a region which has a, which has no claim. To it. No one claims that region. It becomes that much orphan. And in that way, there is a region called Uyghur region, northern to the Karakoram range, northern to Jammu Kashmir, that is Uyghur region. So Uyghur region, so it was a prosperous region prior to 1947. There is a Qing dynasty in China and that ruled from mid 17th century till 1912. So marginally or partially they had controlled Uyghur region, but Uyghur region all alone, many people in Uyghur, nationalists in Uyghur, they also claim that Uyghur is always an independent, even so, USSR, the Soviet Union. They also maintain that Uyghur region has always been a kind of sovereign country, always from 2000 years, 4000 years, 6000 years back, it is always a sovereign country. So till 19, in 1912, when Qing dynasty was over in China, then whatever the clutch they were having had from that dynasty, that was also over. over. But anyway, from the Jammu Kashmir or to Punjab region or to Khyber Pakhtunwa region, people used to go to, to uh, kind of Kashi region. There was a trade, tightly coupled trade. Now still there is a road from Pakistan that is Karakuram road. Still it exists and it is a kind of more China is working as a China-Pakistan uh, commercial, uh, commercial project or something like that. So CPAC, China-Pakistan economic uh, corridor. So that is a Karakoram road or Waghan, Waghan or Waghan uh, corridor that is being made or uh, um, uh, one uh, kind of uh, one uh, trade road is, be, is being constructed from Afghanistan till Uyghur province. So it is Waghan or Waghan project it is called. So Badkhashan region of Afghanistan that is narrow region down the Tajikistan so that region road is going till the Kashi. So that was one time the Kashi region was the most shining region in the Indian subcontinent, Kashi region. But now see the situation. So from 1912 
Anyway, trade was heavy between Indian part, the northern Indian part to Kashi prior to 1947. But 1912 onwards, when Qing dynasty was over in China, anyway, they were completely out of clutch from the China and it was a sovereign country. But in 1947, when Indian National Congress, they started making a boundary saying to people, we are Hindu people and none of them all around are our religion. So we will make a boundary because they always came to India to loot the country. Okay. So all the Muslim emperor and whatever who came from that side of Himalaya in book textbook, we used to read, study that Himalaya saves us from enemy that came from north side. I have never seen any enemy who ca came from the north side of the greater Himalaya. People came from Central Asia through Afghanistan. But no one came from Uyghur side or Tibur side from which Himalaya is saving us. These kind of people, they are bluffing people. They bluffed poor Indians. They made them poor to the poorest. And now in the uh, Himalaya saves some, us from the enemy. That side is also India only. So India, India, I don't know Himalaya saves from which enemy. Anyway, so from 1947 when India became independent country, the Xinjiang province, means the Uyghur country, it became like an orphan. Then what was there? Communist party came in China and people's liberation army, what people and what liberation, I don't know. They marched into, into Uyghur, knowing that no one would claim it. And they won in 1949. So in 1949, the Uyghur region became slave to China. Then they started marching in Tibet. It was not that easy. And from 1951 to 59, there was a bloodbath in Tibet. Finally, in 1959, Dalai Lama was forced to vacate the country and it annexed to Tibet, also annexed to China. So, 1949, Uyghur gone, 1959, Tibet gone. But Tibetan, they struggled. Uyghur, it was a smooth sail. Now, this is now since then, they are fighting. So since then, the Uyghur people are fighting. Now there is a banned organization called East Turkestan Islamic Movement. Now that is a banned art organization that is fighting against China so that they would come out of like Baluchistan is fighting against Pakistan. So the East Turkestan, they call we are, means whatever comes to their mind, this Uyghur people, they are saying it. We are East Turkestan. East Turkestan means from a Turkey, we have come here and we are different. They are from Indian origin. How they will be Chinese? Means it is a question mark, right? Indian culture is completely different. different. It's an agriculture based culture. It's a completely way, way different to Chinese culture. I won't say more about the Chinese culture. You know their eating habit and everything how it will match Indian culture. Just think about it. Now, if Chinese people are controlling Uyghur, what will, what would be happening to those Indian origin people? Just think about it. Now, sometimes they say we are East Turkistani. Sometimes they say we are Uyghur people. Sometimes they say we are this. Sometimes they say we are that. And somehow they are trying to come out of the clutch of the China. How big is the Uyghur? That is the question. So, Uyghur is around 1.6 million square kilometers, 16 lakhs square kilometer is the area of the Uyghur and around uh, 2.5 million, 2.525 million, around 2.5 crore people live in Uyghur. It is exactly north to the Indian Himachal Pradesh, Jammu Kashmir region. So, it goes eastward, which is north and slowly as per the Himalaya, it goes eastward and it meets the Gobi Desert. So, east, exact east side, it is a kind of uh, uh, Tibetan plateau and northeast, that is Gobi Desert of Mongolia. So, from Tibet and the Xinjiang province, Kullur mountain, it, bif it bifurcates, it divides the Kullur, the the Xinjiang province and Tibetan flow to Kundun mountain. 
so you can say that north to the kurnul mountain is the is the uigur region now uigur people just think about their condition now uigur is rich in mineral if it is rich in mineral then there are mines and there are industries so china has kind of made it as industrial hub so kashi town is a kashi city now kashi kasbe and tons of buildings and industry are there now china pushed it so han tribe the, the main tribe main community of china is han h a n han han tribe so it is considered as far east tribe so han tribe they start pushing inside the uigur now uigur condition has come to a stage where only half of the population uigur people half the population are either han tribe or it is the kyrgyz people kazakh people or tajik people so that is the condition of uigur so only 50% people they remain uigur otherwise heavy filtration from the china now they are saying that china is pushing people for the 2000 years whatever comes to their mind they are saying means their complex situation is completely spoiled china considers as any organization in in uigur that is kind of separatist organization as from their point of view if they are fighting for their own country then they are kind of criminals if anyone is found loosely also attached to any separatist organization then then he is treated as a severe criminal penalty with severe criminal penalty if anyone in the uigur is found attached to any of the separatist movement organization then he is treated with the law with the severe criminal penalty that is their situation means 1947 prior to 1947 it was a kind of happy country post 1940 means told post 1949 when china took over then they see the condition now they cannot talk about their country independence if someone talks then fire so this is in the name of islam people are muslim so they should be fire means that is the situation now when kind of the world trade center attack happened in 2001 then china pushed the name of this east turkistan e t i m east turkistan islamic movement the people who has who are carrying the arms and they are fighting for their country those leaders like uh, kind of uh, hasan wasum hasan mas hasan mahsum is the leader in 1990 he started the armed guerrilla movement to liberate his country so these people the china started pushing to the united state that no one actually destroyed your world trade center only these people they have destroyed your world trade center means wherever in the world problem start then it is because of the uigur separatists they are everywhere carrying gun and killing people around the globe as per the china now there is a one more country called pakistan he is so attached to china that the part of jammu kashmir that is karakoram range part of it it is given awarded to china now k2 mountain if you see the wikipedia internet k2 mountain peak that is the second highest peak it falls in china k2 mountain is in jammu and kashmir if you see the zinjiang province the highest peak is k2 means that region of the kashmir pakistan handed over to china i don't know why, how these countries are formed pakistan kind of this country I mean, their job is to do nonsense one now if any separatist from uigur he enters pakistan in the name of islam whatever then army shoots him where they will go no one knows their mother country is india you know the condition of india so they cannot come here they cannot go to pakistan they cannot go anywhere so their only job is to be shot down that's it if something happens in america something happens in africa this is because of the muslims in uighur so wherever you see problem in your life it is because of muslims from the uighur this is as per the china means china is like totally behind them you cannot say that you are from different because 
just think about it. the soviet union always maintained that uighur is a separate country as far as uighur is concerned from the china part they always maintain that it is a separate country now they are putting allegation on russia that islamic east the turkistan islamic movement is initiated by russia but the see the faces if anyone from the uighur if you see you will see exactly he is from india means the way they look now in social media nothing is hidden now it's not newspaper or a kind of tv era it is social media era nothing is hidden these people from the uighur they exactly look like indian only now how you see the chinese which chinese look like indian their culture food habit the way they live everything is completely different from india now if uighur people if they say that we are not chinese what is the problem they are saying everyone should come together and they think about their problem rather than shooting them from the gun it's easy to make someone silent through gun but you are not there to listen to their protest think that chinese enters in india and they start claiming you are from china what will happen to india means just think in that fashion and then if you say i am indian and someone shoots you you say i am indian and someone shoots you what would be the life that the life the people in uighur they are living life you have to keep quiet and they are put many kind of hindrance or many kind of limitation many kind of uh, what you can say control over people people who are doing agriculture work and those things they are controlled there also because india is a agricultural country so rivers come out of the himalaya and river through that uh, agriculture happen monsoon season is everywhere means india is india their season and everything is similar everywhere there also monsoon season comes and rain it rains and agriculture happen paddy also happen there also but anyway that is the condition there are many organization that uh, kind of uh, they were born in uighur region and they they are fighting for their independent okay so if i see the kind of the people who were fighting for their liberation okay like there are many nationalists like there is one nationalist called turgum turgum almas so turgum almas is a nationalist uighur nationalist and he claims that okay so he claims that uh, uh okay so it is kind of uh, uh they uh, uighur region that is a distinct and independent from china for last 6000 past 6000 years and that all other ethnic group groups are later immigrants to xinjiang so whatever we see han tribe or whatever from china they are immigrants han people are being injected to the region for the past 2000 years so this is what they are claiming whatever we see now all are outsider because their culture is there. so takla makan is a plain region and the maximum temperature there it goes 50 degree centigrade more than 50 degree centigrade that we see in asia that we see only in india where temperature goes 50 degree centigrade otherwise it is a cold region so their temperature goes to 50 degree centigrade in the summer otherwise it is very cold in the sense that it is completely snowing in the winter anyway now so what are the organization that is in zinjiang province they are working towards their independence like government in exile so government in exile like baluchistan government in exile there is a government in exile there also is turkey is is turkistan government in exile its name is etg so there like in baluchistan it is government of baluchistan exile formed by professor naila kadri baluch so here it is east turkistan government in exile so not post 1947 everywhere there is problem this is what i am saying iran blowing afghanistan blowing baluchistan blowing and then now the kind of uh, East Turkestan means Uyghur blowing, Burma blowing, Tibet blowing, Bhutan blowing, 
and then Bangladesh blowing, Sri Lanka blowing. I talked about Aceh province in Indonesia blowing. Prior to 1947, everyone was happy. Anyway. Now, if you close the boundary, if you cut down the switch from the, all the light, then light will never go. Anyway, so East Turkestan government in exile, founded in Washington, D.C., 14 September 2004. Okay. Now, they are kind of working at the advocate for the East Turkestan independence. This is what they say. Now, there is another civil organization called East Turkestan National Awakening Movement that is located again in Washington, D.C., and it was established in 4th June 2017. One armed organization that is Turkistan Islamic Party or the ETIM is Turkistan Islamic Movement that is armed organization and it is banned by China, obviously, Kazakhstan, Pakistan. It is banned. We see the heights of uh, buttering. It is uh, uh, and Pakistan, Turkey from 2020 banned by USA. Now, this is the condition. In past also, so the main insurgency that, that is a kind of bloody revolt that started in Uyghur region in 1990s and under the leadership of, of Hassan Masum. Okay. Now, there are other historical organizations. They were also formed and see that their dates. Okay. So, there is an organization called ETPRP, East Turkestan People's Revolution. Revolutionary Party, founded in 1968. It was an armed separatist group and it is called supported by Russia. URFET, United Revolutionary Front of East Turkestan, armed separatist. It, it was active from 1970 to 1989 and it is also uh, claimed that backed by USSR. East Turkestan Liberation Organization and it was called associated with Taliban. Committee of National Revolution 1932 to 1934, 1932 to 1934, it was active. Means this proves that during that region also China was behind them and finally 1949 they occupied. So they were showing eye during that region also. So for brief period 1932 to 34, when China was showing their eye, then they formed Committee of National Revolution. Young Kashgar Party, so 1933 to 1934. So during two hour, year, they kind of they were resistant. So they always called that Soviet Union. So China always claimed that all the root cause of the all problem is Russia. So USSR, they are backing. Because USSR has some brain. They, that country was not unbrained country. It was highly brained country. When the people look and feel, when people culture, the geography, China is a hilly country. There are hills only in China, whereas the Uyghur is a plain country. It's a, it's a kind of a Takla Makan desert. It's a plain. Somewhere where rivers are there, then it's oasis and very top class agriculture happens. So it's a plain region. That is a hilly region. Han tribe is the main tribe of China, where it is a Uyghur tribe. So they are completely different. Prior to Islamic Islamic uh, Islamic uh, religion, they were Buddhist. So Uyghur name comes from the Buddhism. Now it is Xinjiang from the China. But the original name, the persistent name is Kashi of the region. Okay, so this is insurgency in the Uyghur region, and I hope, I believe, I trust that people in Uyghur, they would not be living the life the way means full brain is going, full strength is going in getting the independence. At least no, no human should spend his life struggling for independence like people in Ake or people in Baluchistan. You just see the social media. There are many people in Baluchistan or Uyghur region. They are living outside their country. They are struggling, like we saw so many organizations are formed in the United States. They are struggling. May see the life, means in India people think about their future and then future path and then how their future they can plan and then what they will buy and how the, their, the lifestyle, see the lifestyle of these people. 
they think about their life. This is the future 90, post-1947 period. I wish that they will also live life the way other part of the world people live.